This film is about a man who is very important in the history of Butte Town, but a man who history has forgotten. His name is Frederick de Courcy Hamilton. Frederick was born on 23rd of June 1856. His father was from Scotland and his mother was from Ireland. I think he's very lucky because he's from three different countries. He was born in Thornham Hall, Norfolk. If you don't know where Norfolk is, well, it's in the far east of Britain. He came from a rich family and his parents were wealthy landowners. Frederick went to a school in Essex, which was a boarding school called Felstead. This meant that Frederick had to leave home. Frederick's favourite sport was cricket and he was a very good batsman. When he was at school, he played for the school team. He must have been a perfect cricket player. In 1872, when he was 16, Frederick moved to Cardiff to train to become a solicitor. I bet he was a really good solicitor by the time he was 20. Frederick's job was being a solicitor and in time a company owner. After this success, he then eventually became a owner of many successful companies. When Frederick arrived at Cardiff, he joined the Cardiff Cricket Club. In time, he was also selected to play for the MCC, which is a world famous cricket club. I think he was very lucky to play for the MCC because they play at Lourdes and Lourdes is one of the best grounds in the world. On the 10th of August 1875, he was selected to play for Glamorgan County Cricket Club. He was 19. He played against Breckenshire. Although Glamorgan lost, he scored 35 in the first innings and 33 in the second. That's pretty good. Frederick became a success because he worked as a solicitor for the Marcus of Butte. The Marcus of Butte Scottish home is called Mount Stewart on the Isles of Butte. Our school is named after his home. Frederick became one of the most important and successful men in Cardiff. He helped expand Cardiff into one of the most important docks and cities in Great Britain. Cardiff was made rich by the export of coal. Coal was quite rare in many places. It, it was really expensive. This made Cardiff important. The nickname given to coal was Black Gold. This is because coal was dug like gold. I think that's a cool name. The coal was mined in the Rhondda Valleys. There's 79 coal mines in Rhondda Valley. That's a lot of coal. Trains call got to Cardiff. New lines for the railways to bu were built to link to Butte Docks. Coal was exported all around the world from the Butte Docks, and every day Frederick watched the businessmen do their deals for coal out on the streets. There was nowhere to do the deals, so the deals were done in the street. That was bad because it was often wet and windy, and the paperwork would get ruined. Frederick saw this every day and saw that was a problem. Then he had an idea. He decided that Butan needed a place for all these coal deals to be carried out indoors. So Frederick formed a company to build one of the grandest buildings ever seen in Cardiff, the world's famous coal exchange. The coal exchange was built in Mount Stewart Square between the years 1883 and 1886. The name of the architect who built and designed the coal exchange was Edmund Seward. The coal exchange opened on the 1st of February 1886. Hundreds of people from local businesses and even politicians turned up. Up to 9,000 people used the coal exchange per day. Wow, that's a lot of people. It was so successful that in 1904 a big deal ha happened. The big deal that happened was the first one million pound deal in the world. By the 1900s, Frederick realised that the workers of Butan were really struggling, so he devoted the rest of his life to try and make conditions for the people of Butan better. 
Frederick helped the local workers of Butan and Carded Docks. He also helped the workers of Barry Docks too. Frederick built new houses for the people who lived in Butan because they lived in homes with bacteria and industrial waste in and around them. The old houses were a health risk. Frederick helped change all that. Frederick also chose to build many shops for people to set up their own businesses because he knew that it was too expensive to rent or buy big shops. So Frederick decided to make smaller shops with living space above them so that it would be cheaper and easier for local people to start small businesses. He called it an arcade. Frederick built Cardiff's first arcade in 1886. It's still there to this day and is called High Street Arcade. Some years later he followed up with Duke Street Arcade. His arcades are very successful and still are today. Soon came the First World War and in and time and time of trouble for Cardiff docks. Workers weren't, ha weren't happy with the conditions they had to work in. Um, many went on strike. Lots of men began returning to Butte Town from the Great War, injured and unwell. They were greeted by the worst conditions. Butte Town was an unhealthy place for these brave servicemen to return to. So in 1917, Frederick made his last gift to the people of Butte Town, and it was to do with sport. In 1970, Butte Town became the first community of multicultural people in Britain. As Cardiff grew, Butte Town had 57 countries represented and over 50 different languages spoken. Frederick thought the best way of helping the community to become mates was by playing sports. So he introduced cricket in 1917. It was such a success that in 1918, Frederick organized the first season of fixtures for the club. That's 100 years ago this year, same year that World War I ended, the 11th of November 1918. Frederick also thought it would help everyone stay fit and healthy, but also get to know each other. This would help the workers enjoy their life more and adjust to life after the war. Players from all around the world. multicultural sports club in Britain. This proud tradition is carried on today in Butte Town by the Kayaks Rugby Club. The first person to realise the importance of sport was Frederick during the, war, during the war years of World War I. Frederick had a good life and lived until 1940 when he passed...